Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. And I'm doing a second video today because I've got a request on wiring up a three phase PMA. And the best way to do it, well, I'm going to give him two ways because the way I have a setup here. I use a dump load system, which they no longer sell. You could probably find a used one somewhere. But they do sell dump load systems still, but not with the PWM solar charge controller built on. They use a digital um, charge controller on the same type of solenoid. Now, this is not a Ford solenoid that you would see in an old Ford vehicle. Some people confuse it and think it is. This is not. This has um, connectors here for uh, connecting together for one side, and these have other ones here for connecting to another side. And what happens is, is these are always connected until this is activated, and then it disconnects. These two are disconnected, and when this solenoid is activated, it connects the two together and lets current flow. So you got a disconnect and a connect. And then these two are the activators. And that's why they're put, put tied into those two screws. Forget all that. They don't use these anymore. They might micro cycle and they... I haven't had a, ever had a problem with it. But they have gotten better and they're using a digital controller, a little tiny box on here now, and a slightly different wiring. Okay, so let's get back to the beginning. So, these three wires are the three-phase wires coming in from my PMA, or those of you who don't know what a PMA is, it's a permanent magnet alternator, or a turbine, simply, that people call them turbines. Okay, so these are the three wires coming in right here. They're 10-gauge wires, because I'm using a 1,685-watt um, KT5 PMA. All right, so they come in here. Now I put these three connection blocks here to make it easier to connect and disconnect if I had to. Uh, you don't really have to do that. You can actually solder those wires together, slip a uh, piece of uh, heat shrink tube over them, sh shrink it down, and just have a straight in connection. I liked it this way in case I had to do some work on the PMA uh, I could disconnect it completely from the system and not worry about damaging anything else in the system. All right, moving on. So those, uh, coming off of those three wires coming in, you could actually come straight into your rectifier. Don't use the crimp connectors like I did. I, I took a shortcut. This has been working fine for six years. Don't worry about it. They'll, they they will work, but you should want definitely want to solder the um, the eye connectors or the fork connectors onto the ends of your three wires. So bridge, this bridge rectifier is only the front piece here. It is not this part in the back. That's a heat sink. I save heat sinks from old electronics because they come in handy for doing stuff like this. A bridge rectifier will get hot when it's doing its job. So to keep it cooler I put a an extra heat sink behind it. So these two screws, that mounting screws, actually go through through the uh, bridge rectifier with the holes they make, and then I s drilled holes right through the um, heat sink and went all the way through into the board behind it. That keeps it extra cool. Right now it's cool even though it's been, it was running hot all day today. All right. I added an extra little CPU fan underneath it and the CPU fan has a switch on it so I can turn it on and off if I want to but that blows air through the heat sink and around the bridge rectifier to keep it cool. You, don't, you definitely want to keep that cool. Alright so three wires coming in that's three phase. All right, that's AC alternating current. So now you got to change that to DC or direct current. 
so that you can use it on your batteries. So coming out of the bridge rectifier, and let me get that focus, you got a positive on red and a negative is black. And they're marked on there, plus and minus. Okay, so those come off and then I added in this little unit right here which they call a high precision watt meter and power analyzer. Okay, so what you're seeing on here for the numbers in the top side right here, that would be the amount of amps coming in when the PMA is charging. The winds are calm right now so it's not doing anything. 13.57 is the battery voltage. That's what your battery bank is at right now. Or well, my battery bank is anyway. Okay. Bottom corner, 0, 0.0 watts. That's how many watts would be coming in if it was windy and it was charging. It's at zero because it's calm right now. Okay, starting here, I'll start with the next one. App, um, watts peak, amp hours, uh, volts max, watt hours, amps peak. So that's, those are the thing, and that keeps track of your, um, your totals. So if we, we look here, we got uh, 1039, 3800, uh, 1269, and you know, remember the, the, the numbers here, or what the um, letters mean. Watts peak, amp hours, volts max, watt hours. Okay, so that just lets you know what's coming in and what's going out and that stuff, and wh what your state of your batteries are. Now I use a DC breaker coming off the output of that meter, which is going to the battery. Okay, so there's a red and a black coming out of the meter. The black is negative, goes to the battery. The red is positive and goes to the battery. Now you want the positive to go to the last battery in the bank or the first battery in the bank, it doesn't matter. So I got it on the last battery down there on the positive pole. You want the negative to go on the negative pole of the first battery or the last battery depending how you decide to hook it up. So basically your negative is on one end of the whole battery bank and your positive is on the other end of the whole battery bank. So it's using all of these batteries as a single battery. It's sharing the power through all of them instead of just if I hooked it up just between here and there, it would be taking power off of here and then, or adding power into here, and then have to disperse it out two different directions to fill the other batteries that are down the line. And of course, you're gonna have a voltage drop and resistance through all the wiring. So you want your, your voltages to go through the batteries, not through your wiring. Okay, so, what does that do? Now that now when your your PMA is producing electricity, it comes in in three phase. It's converted to um, single phase DC. It goes through the meter, lets you know how much is coming in, and it goes directly to charging your batteries. But there's no controller. There's no way to control how much electricity is going to go to your batteries on a super three or four day windy streak of uh, high winds and that would blow up your batteries so now you got to have something to control that all right so this is where we get to your options you have two options now that you've converted it and you've got coming out of the whole system you got three wires going in and now you got two wires coming out one two okay so what are you going to do, where are you going to put those wires? I put them straight into the battery. Well, you could get yourself a Midnight Classic 150, 200, or 250. The number means the uh, maximum amount of volts input that you can put through the system. Okay, so you could get another Midnight. Now you cannot use a Midnight Classic controller for both solar and wind but you can use it for either or 
So this one's using it for, for solar. So if I wanted to run, instead of running straight to the batteries off of this, I could run it through another Midnight Classic, right, mount it right here, and there's, follow the instructions in the owner's manual as to how to make the connections and how to set the curve to get the best output from your PMA. And that is what I re would recommend. You get the best, best output from your PMA that way. When I set it up, I didn't have all that money to do that with, so I did it this way. So I had to add a dump load controller. Now the dump load controller connects directly to the batteries. You can see this red wire goes to the positive here. Now it should actually go just like the other ones. It should go to the first terminal and the negative go to the last terminal. I've got them right here because this does not activate very much anymore. But if you're going to use one, you definitely want to use longer wires and do it like I said positive to the first battery, negative to the last battery, or vice versa. So you go through the whole battery bank with it. So when this thing turns on, this, on mine, this old uh, PWM is set to the specifications that the manufacturer decided was proper for a 12-volt system. All right, so there's no control in that. You can't change any of those settings. This will tell when the batteries reach, say, 13.8 um, or 14 or whatever, 13.9, whatever they set it at. I don't remember for right now. But it, it, when that, these battery banks get up to that amount, then this would automatically kick on, and you'd hear this, and that yellow light would come on. The fan comes on automatically because I set it up that way to keep the solenoid cool. And that's probably why I've never had a problem with this, is because I keep everything cool. But um, that would that was uh, when that connects is what it does is it wants to tip um, get rid of the power that's the excess power that's in your batteries. So that's got to go to some type of a res resistance load. So for a resistance load, what I did was. You can't see it back here, but coming off of the battery, where it says battery. No, that's that that one going battery. So let, let's see where. What am I doing here? Let me regather my thoughts here. Okay, so what's happening here is this one's charged, connected to the battery. The other side, when that makes connection, comes off here. And it runs up to a resistance load. Okay, the positive runs up to the resistance load. Now the negative runs right back to a negative pole on the battery. So now what happens is if this thing, when this thing kicks on with that click, it's connected. Now those wires are connected. It's drawing power off of the battery bank and putting it into this heater this uh, resistor. Now that's getting hot. So that's using up extra power to keep the batteries from overcharging. It's very inefficient. You could use, and I'll, I'll take you outside and show that in a minute, you could use a water heater element, a 12 volt water heater element, and make yourself a little 12 volt water heater to heat water. I don't need that here. My tankless water heater um, is on propane. When I turn the faucet on, I get hot water. When I turn the faucet off, the hot water stops, and I'm not using any propane. So I do it that way. But if you had an electric water heater or you want to make one, I'll show you how I made one myself. You could, instead of running to this heating element, run the two wires over to the heating element in your um, electric water heater, 12 volt electric water heater, and heat the wa hot water for your shower or your bath or for your uh, laundry or whatever. I find that I inefficient because the um, the unit does not kick on 
and give me excess electricity uh, long enough or often enough to keep hot water in the little electric water heater. So most of the time when you go to use hot water, you're going to have cold water in that system. So I, that's why I say I recommend instead of going coming out of this gauge and going to the battery, come out of this gauge, go into a Midnight Classic controller, and then your uh, batteries would be maintained in the most efficient way through your Midnight controller. And you could still connect off of the... Um, the connectors inside the midnight controller that go to your accessory connections and you could use that extra electricity for something else whatever running lights or keeping a night light on or whatever but uh, the midnight controller will actually uh, just disconnect the charge from your batteries if your turbine is putting out too much electricity so it won't blow up your batteries okay so that's the two options. Either use a dump load controller, put the power from your PMA directly into your batteries, and then use a dump load controller to take the excess off and send it to a wasteful heater. Or come in with your three phase, go through your rectifier, go through your gauge so you know what you got, and then go directly into your midnight controller. Now you really don't need this gauge if you're going to go into the midnight controller because everything you not to know about your midnight controller charging and doing is all right here on the screen I like it that they keep it right up here in front so you don't really have to push buttons to see it right now I got 108.5 volts coming in off my solar panels 13.8 volts in the battery I got 84 watts coming in and I got 5.7 to 6.1 of amps coming in. I'm on float. I don't need any power. So Midnight Classic said, you don't need any more power. We'll float it and make sure you don't overcharge your batteries. So this, these are the best chargers in the world, if you ask me. I love these things. I really, really do. And I do not get paid anything for saying that. I'm not associated with Midnight um, Classic controllers at all, but I do think they are the best in the world. They really did a great job on these things. All right. So, any questions or comments, some, anything I missed in the description, leave it in the comments. Go down in the comments and ask the question. I'll be glad to uh, answer it directly through the comments, or if you need to... Uh, get more clarity on connections. I know everybody says I got a, a spaghetti factory explosion for wiring in here. You know what? The wire doesn't know if the wire is bent or straight. It still flows. All right. <laughs> and uh, I always say function before beauty. So if it doesn't do its job, there's no need making it pretty. That's all there is to it. So uh, someday down the line when I'm bored, I got nothing better to do. I'll come in, I'll disconnect all the wiring, and I'll I'll put it in perfect squares going down a nice looking board and all of that so it's real easy to see. Doesn't need it. It ain't going to make it work any better. All right, everybody. That's all I have for today. Don't forget questions and comments down below. Don't forget thumbs ups. Don't forget to subscribe and share. This is G-Bear signing off.